So Google made a very interesting announcement yesterday, and now officially their infrastructure for all Google Cloud and broader Google services is agentic ready. They just launched fully managed remote MCP servers. And to understand why this is such a big upgrade, we have to look at how we used to do things almost up till yesterday. For example, let's say that you're building your own agent and you want to do something simple. Let's say that you want your agent to check a location on Google Maps. To do this, you will have to go and search for unofficial community-based MCP server in GitHub. Once you get it, you will go ahead and clone the repo, install the dependencies, and then run it on your local machine. It was just a lot of friction, right? All that is no longer the case. You no longer need to really build or install or manage those local servers because Google has upgraded on their end their existing infrastructure APIs to natively speak the MCP language. It acts as a unified layer, which means you can now simply point your agent or the Gemini CLI directly to a secure Google endpoint. And it just works. They're rolling this out starting with Google Maps, BigQuery, and some of the Google Cloud components like Kubernetes. They're also rolling it out and extending it to Apigee. And what I plan to do is, is in this video, I'm going to walk you through some of them and potentially show a couple of demos as well, which I have just built. So with that understanding, let's get into it. So the first one is Google Maps. Your agent can now officially access trusted geospatial data, live traffic, travel times, and location details without hallucinating. It's a managed endpoint, so you aren't you're scraping data, you're just asking the source of truth. So here is a demo app that they have built, and you can see that they're talking about how this is a travel planning app, which is powered by Grounding Light MCP service, and then of course, Gemini. So the idea is we are able to demonstrate how you can embed this and uh, you can actually use any LLM application to call this, right? So I'm going to ask, I'm going to select this one, which is a little bit more complicated, which is I want to go from San Jose to Yosemite uh, National Park tomorrow, how to sleep there, what is the best route and uh, what is the weather forecast, right? So this, you can see that this, this needs to have, you know, a lot of different types of perspectives, right? So you need to have weather, you need to also provide like maps information, and you can also, you will get to see where to sleep, etc. So there's a lot of different different kind of information coming in just one single question, right? So here, it, it is able to give, first of all, the route. Second, it is also providing what we had actually asked. And if I click on this, right, it is also describing the different places where I can take some rest. And this is directly coming from, this is how it is responding, right? So this is the tool call from an MCP perspective. So based on each of the questions that we have asking, right? So for example, like lookup weather. So that's another tool call that we have made. So you can see how detailed an analysis has been given here. So you can obviously ask more questions, but this is the idea. And this is the GitHub repository for this particular sample app. But here, once you go through this, the key things that you will need to see are the prerequisites. So in this case, you'd require a Google Cloud project, and then you need to create different types of keys so that you can connect to this remote MCP server. Then you need to have a Maps API key. So once you have all of these things, the MCP server is remotely managed by Google, so you should be able to now very easily access this. Again, it is not restricted to only the large language models from Google. You can also access now grounded data from Google Maps from any other large language model as well, and that is the key. Okay, so that is the first one. So the second one is BigQuery. This really solves the data gravity problem. Instead of dragging terabytes of data out of your data warehouse to put it into a context window, this MCP server lets the agent reason inside the warehouse. It understands the schema and executes queries in place. It is faster, cheaper, and safer. Let's look at this in action. All right, so I am in my favorite data warehouse, which is Google Cloud BigQuery. And I've got a data set, which is MCP Bakery, and I've uploaded four different tables. Now, this is the demo app and demo data set that is also available, so you can absolutely replicate it as I want to really build it and try it myself. So that's why I have everything here, right? You can see that these are all the different tables. Now, if I click on any one of these, I can look into the data as well. So, you know, this one is specifically around the different prices from a bakery. So you have the store name, you have the product name and stuff like that. And then there are other tables around demograph. Then this one is a very interesting one, which is the sales history weekly. If you look at this is for every store, for every product, what has been the quantity sold and what was the total revenue, right? So I can already start thinking of the different kind of questions that I can ask. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use agent development kits in order to ask questions. And this is another cool thing. Here I'm using ADK, but you can use Crew AI, Landgraph or whatever, and make a call to this particular MCP server and get to talk to your data. But in this case, I'm going to use the agent development kit here. So I'm going to say hi. 
and we'll zoom it a little bit so that you can all see what is going on. And I'm going to ask, well, what data do you have accessed? Right. We will see quickly what it responds with. And ideally it should tell us the different tables in the database that it has access to, right? So fantastic. I have access to market and business, business and market data, and it also has access to Google maps because guess what? We are using just one uh, MCP to connect to multiple services here, right? Within BigQuery, you can see this is, these are the, exactly the same tables that it has access to. Now, what I can do is ask a very complicated question, which is I want a revenue projection from, for 2025 look at my sales history and take data from my best performing store for this particular product and then run a forecast for December 2025 to estimate the quantity I will sell, then calculate the projected total revenue using just under the premium price we found. Let's use dollar eighteen. So this is a pretty complicated question that I'm asking. And you can see that it has to figure out the best performing store, number one, then do a forecast, which is where BigQuery is very interesting because it has BigQuery ML, BQML as well. And then based on that, it is going to create a forecast and then it will project the total revenue, right? So you can see that it is already off the races and he's, it's calling all of these different functions. And you can already see how different different parts of the agent's functions are performing. Right? So right now it is it evaluating the SQL statement that it is, it is going to run on our behalf, but you can see that it has d done a lot of this al already, right? So Let's go back and just see where it is. So this is executing the SQL. And here you can see the kind of SQL it is sending as a query. So create a replace this. And you can see this is the most crucial part. And I love this. It is using a time series forecasting model in order to come back and do a prediction for us. And this is, uh, this is the beauty of BigQuery machine learning, BigQuery ML, because it is part of the data warehouse itself. And that's why it is able to go ahead and execute this. Right? So this is just super fantastic. So we'll see what it comes back with. I'm very pleased to see that not only it is able to do the regular kind of data analysis where we are asking, okay, go figure out which one is the highest performing store and stuff like that. But it is also able to execute a machine learning algorithm and then come back to us with answers. So we'll give it a second because it's doing the forecast. So it, it, it is going to take a little bit of time and then we'll come back to show you the results. So it has done its job and you can see it responds with based on the sales history of a best performing store. Here's the revenue projection, right? And you can see that the best performing store, it did the analysis and it is Playa Vista because of the highest historical sales. And this is the projection, right? And you can see that it has done, it, it was at the execute SQL. You can see the number of times it has handed it off to the sub agents and stuff like that. And you can see the response here, right? So this is the final response, which is based on the sales history of your disk. Here is a revenue projection. You can also see the thought signature as well, which is a cool thing in the 3.0 model. And you can see the actual revenue projection here. I tried to ask it to generate a graph. So it, it politely declined and said that, hey, I cannot generate an image, but I can provide a text-based visualization. Still, you know, much better than just looking at it in terms of just something like this. Pretty neat, right? So this is really so powerful because you are now able to just talk to the data which is inside Google Cloud's ecosystem, in this case, BigQuery, in the previous one we looked at Google Maps, but directly through through your own large language model, right? And this is really game-changing. Game-changing in a sense that, yes, this was possible. You could build the MCP server or you could take a community-built MCP server, but now this is an official MCP server, which is managed by Google. You can trust it. It will be scalable. And with the new models that Google will continue, hopefully this will also get evolved, right? So that's a really cool idea from Google's side for you to leverage this. So this was the second one. So the third one really is around the Google Compute Engine. And the fourth one is around the Kubernetes Engine. This is really more around the DevOps and the infrastructure side of the house. And now they're exposing these capabilities and making sure that the agents can also autonomously manage the infrastructure, which will be a pretty, pretty cool thing to do. One last thing that they announced, which is really game changing in my opinion, is the MCP support in Apigee. Now, Apigee is Google Cloud's comprehensive API management platform that allows companies to build and secure their own set of APIs. Now, making Apigee MCP enabled natively means you don't need to make any changes to your existing APIs. You should be able to use, like Apigee should be able to use your existing API specifications and you can simply add business logic to it, right? So you can see that you can turn your existing APIs into MCP tools governed by the same set of policies 
and with full visibility over agentic interaction. So this is where they're not only limiting this to their own services, but with Apogee's support for MCP, now they're also extending it to the APIs that organizations are building as well. So those were the main things that I wanted to cover today in this video. I hope, you know, the demo made sense and you guys enjoyed it. If you think about it, Google has effectively removed the friction of connecting your agents to their cloud, right? No more local installs, just direct managed connections. I will be linking the official documentation and stuff like that in the description. So please do check it out. If you found this breakdown helpful, please do let me know in the comment section. And of course, if you have any questions, please let me know about those too. I hope this was valuable to you. If you liked the video, please hit that like button and please do subscribe to the channel. Thanks once again for taking the time to watch this. I will see you in the next one.